Hey everybody, welcome to Cut, Transform, Glue uh, into the fourth video of the Drone Dog build. In this one, I have lots of things to talk about. I'll show you guys how I made the intermediate leg pieces, the final versions of it. And also, I have a bunch of studies and solutions made for the ball joints. So, without any further ado, let's get to the video. Okay, so uh, the first problem, the first challenge that I want to tackle uh, in this week is the, the ball joints that I want to make for the legs of the robot. I really think these models should be uh, sitting on ball joints. I think the ball joints kind of kind of give the, the model some flexibility when it comes to posing it. And also it makes much more sense. This is a multi-purpose uh, platform unit. So the ball joints is a, is a way to keep it flexible. And yeah, I think it's the best design choice uh, for this robot. And the ball that I'll use uh, for this ball joint is a deodorant stick uh, roll-on ball, as you guys can see right here. Uh, I had one laying around, so I decided to grab it and use it for this project. Now I know that last week I did that uh, gray piece right there that you guys just saw in the video, but I actually want to go back to the drawing board and come up with something new for the ball joint. I feel I feel like the the older one is kind of strange. Uh, it, it attaches strangely to to the to the intermediate legs. So I, I want to really come up with something new and more sturdy actually. Now I know for sure I can go in the internet and I can search for ball joints and I'll have a, a, a decent solution but I want to come up with my own idea, I want to tackle this problem and I want to see how I can solve it. Uh, I, I think this is so much fun and interesting and it gives me a better understanding of the problem. So this is what I did. I did a drawing with a concave uh, socket for the deodorant ball and from the sides I want to come up uh, with some structures to create the pressure uh, towards the center of the concave shape. Uh, so I came up with this design right here. This is just a, a quick prototype, nothing too fancy right here. So the, the ball, uh, the deodorant ball sits right here in the bottom and I have four holes on the sides as you guys can see right there and in those four holes uh, I put uh, a steel rod with another ball uh, just to create the pressure on the on the deodorant ball this is a, a simple prototype this is not the final solution this is just so that I can uh, really understand how a ball joint uh, works and the amount of pressure that I need to make to keep it, uh, to keep things together uh, this is just a, a quick study of the problem so I know that this might look like a waste of time, uh, but I really like uh, these types of processes. I like to try stuff. I like to, to, to feel uh, the pieces in my hand and kind of understand uh, the, the problem from there. And from this uh, prototype, I realized that uh, the pressure needs to come uh, from, from the, the, the top half of that sphere. So this is something that I realized by doing this first uh, quick prototype. So now I really feel like I understand a lot more about ball joints and I will think about this design for a couple of days and while I'll do that I'll work on some other pieces of the project like the intermediate uh, leg pieces. Last week I told you guys that those uh, four blue pieces right there, they are temporary. I want to come up with a design for that intermediate piece right here and I want to create something uh, interesting, something uh, beautiful and this is what I will do uh, right here. I found this uh, black piece right here in my collection of Kriblis and I feel like this is an interesting piece uh, to start this intermediate leg. But as you guys can see right here, it has some extra features that I need to trim and clean before I use it. So this is what I did next. I've grabbed a pair of pliers and I started trimming uh, out all of the excess. And after most of the excess was trimmed out, I decided to, to give it some sanding with some sanding sticks and also with my mini disc sander. Uh, 
now as you guys can see the piece is uh, cleaned up and nice and ready to go but as this piece is going to be symmetrical I actually had to do it uh, two times uh, so as you guys can see right here I have two of those uh, to glue uh, back to back and create the the intimate leg piece I decided to, to sandwich in between those two pieces a strip of styrene as you guys can see right here so I'm going to just roughen up uh, the surface of the styrene and I'm going to glue uh, those two pieces actually those three pieces together with some CA glue this piece needs to be symmetrical uh, so I'm doing my best right here to keep everything aligned now because I've used the styrene piece right there in the middle not only it is bulkier but also it makes my life easier when I start adding some stuff right there in the middle to continue the intermediate leg piece and to continue that piece I've grabbed my collection of big pieces my big griblies and I have some interesting pieces to go right there I need to make something interesting I need to, to uh, choose some pieces that has some ridges and some interesting uh, design features on it and this box uh, this collection of griblies is actually super useful I have some dead printers pieces uh, that are super interesting like these ones right here but the thing with these pieces right here is that they are not symmetrical so I've had those uh, for quite some time but I was never able to use them on a project I don't know if you guys can see in the video but uh, they have some differences on the length of the parts so I cannot uh, combine them together uh, like side by side or actually back to back because they are not symmetrical But as I really want to use them on this intermediate leg piece because they look super interesting. Uh, so the solution for this problem is to actually uh, to break these pieces uh, as much as I can to separate each feature. So this is a long process of breaking everything, separating each piece and each feature of each piece and then give the, the pieces some, some, some sanding uh, and after a long while of working I have the feature separated as you guys can see right here. So as you guys can see by separating the features I can uh, align them in a way that they are symmetrical and I'll glue each pair of those features on each side of the leg piece. So again, as I always do, I've used some sea glue to, to keep things together onto the styling strip, but before I glued uh, those two pairs uh, that I've worked on, I decided to glue these other griblies right here, uh, just to reach the desired uh, width of that uh, leg piece. Okay, so now I can finally glue uh, those uh, uh, interesting pieces right there on the side, uh, but I have to really be careful to keep things uh, as aligned as I can. Uh, this uh, leg piece needs to be symmetrical. So as you guys can see, I was super careful and by just using some drops of sea glue, I was able to position uh, precisely the pieces on the side. Once I had each pair glued to each side of the leg piece, I just had to trim the excess of the top piece with my Dremel. And now I'll just glue a couple of laser cut acrylic pieces uh, to create the front axle of the intermediate leg piece. Of course, uh, there was some extra styrene, so I just had to trim that down and give it some sanding. And now I have the, 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 the body, the, the full shape of the intermediate leg piece right here, and I'm happy with it. 
Now, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, but the, the blue temporary piece, it had a big hole uh, in the axle and I had to put a big boat uh, coming, uh, going through it. So uh, I decided to change that. I, I feel like an M4 boat is more than enough uh, for this project. So I've printed those yellow pieces to go right in there and cover the hole and create a, a thinner axle. At this point, I'm also going to, to add some details to the leg piece. Uh, this is going to reach its final shape uh, before I take, uh, before I make a rubber mold out of it. So I really have to add the details uh, right now. Those black pieces uh, look amazing, but they have some features that are actually kind of hard uh, to make on a rubber mold. So I have to, to add some, some epoxy putty right here uh, to kind of make the angles uh, kind of easier. I want to make my life easier when it comes to making a rubber mold. So yeah, I've mixed a, a bit of epoxy putty and I'm trying to make the angles uh, easier for the rubber mold. In this piece right here, I feel like this feature is too deep, so I wanna I wanna make it uh, shallower by filling most of it with epoxy putty as well. Also, I, I realized that uh, the the axles they need to be proud of the of the leg. So I decided to grab some pieces of acrylic, of laser cut acrylic, and glue them to the side, uh, making the axle uh, kind of proud. And then I just have to re-drill uh, the M4 holes. So this is what I did. I re-drilled the holes and I'll just have to wait for the epoxy body to set so then I can give it some sanding and some finishing touches uh, before adding the final coat of primer. So after a couple of hours and some sanding, I gave it the first coat of primer and I'm super happy with how uh, this turned out. But if you compare uh, the new uh, leg piece to the temporary ones, you can see that it is actually uh, longer. So now I have to make some changes to the waist of the robot. I need, I need the, the axle to, to aim at the same place of the blue one, but I need to start uh, kind of deeper onto the waist. So I remove the top 3D printed piece from the waist and I'll create a new one from there. There's a lot of back and forth in my projects, as you guys can see. I'm changing these ways for the third or fourth time. I cannot even remember. But I really feel like I want to keep those moments on the videos uh, to show you guys that the process has a lot of mistakes and that is okay. You can always go back and change stuff and, and, and aim for the perfect solution. So I quickly 3D modeled and printed uh, that yellow piece right there uh, to sit right in the middle of the waist and, and try, to, try to reach uh, the same point as the temporary blue pieces reached. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. I feel like this is a good solution and the intermediate leg piece works super good. Now I need to go back to the ball joint. Okay, so now that I really feel like I understand how a ball joint works, I went back to the drawing board and I came up with this design right here. So uh, there's a socket, uh, the ball goes right in there in the middle and on the top of it goes the pressure ring in blue in the video. On the body of the socket and on the pressure ring, there are four holes uh, that I will put some bolts uh, uh, on it to, to add pressure to the system. So I've just printed those pieces and as you guys can see there's also a hole right here in the socket so that I can put a, a bolt through it uh, going through the intermediate leg piece and then I just have to assemble uh, everything together. I was trying to come up with a design that didn't use bolts uh, to add tension to the system but I feel like this is not important. Uh, I can use some uh, nice uh, tiny M2 bolts uh, on the end of the process that look interesting and don't affect the overall look of the robot. But yeah, I think you guys get the idea. Uh, the bolts, the four bolts, they pull uh, the pressure ring uh, towards the ball and that adds pressure to the system and the ball can kind of keep the position. 
I'm super happy with this ball joint design. It was my first try on making something as complex as this and it works super well and it also looks super interesting. So at the end of that work day, I was super excited. I've, I've put it against the, the robot, I've attached it to the uh, intermediate leg piece and I was super happy with what I was seeing and that was a, a nice day for me. But on the next day, and you can call me an insane person, I decided to restart the whole thing. And I did that off camera, uh, I started a new uh, intermediate leg piece and this time I was aiming to, to make something just a bit smaller. So as you guys can see, it looks almost the same as the, the first one, but it is like uh, 10 millimeters or less smaller. And I also decided to design this new uh, smaller ball joint right here. As you guys can see, it is much smaller than the first one and it also works uh, super well. I'm super happy with it. Now let me just explain how I managed to make it uh, way smaller than the first one. It has the same design features of the first one, a socket and a pressure ring, but the ball, it actually has the bottom uh, kind of cut out. And with that feature, I'm able to make the whole thing even shorter. Now, don't get me wrong, when you cut the bottom third of the ball, you kind of limit the way you can move, but at the end of the day, it has like 40 degrees of freedom, and that's more than enough for, for the robot. So I'm super happy that I was able to, to come up with it. So here's the new assemble, uh, the smaller intermediate leg piece with the third version of the ball joint. I feel like this newer version has uh, enough freedom of movement for the robot. I feel it looks super interesting and if you compare it to the big uh, bulky uh, second version of the ball joint, it is much smaller and it looks uh, better in my opinion against the robot. If you're interested in printing those ball joints, I have the files available for my patrons on the combat robot tier. Now my next step is to make a mode of the intermediate leg piece and cast four copies of that. Now I need to make an investment, I need to buy the rubber and the resin, so if you want to help me with that, uh, I have a couple of links for you guys in the description box. Now I won't finish this video without showing you guys my ideas uh, for the legs of the robot. So this is what I'll show you guys next. So I grabbed a thick piece of paper so that I can draw a one-to-one -one idea of a leg, of a geometry of a leg, and then I'll put it to the side of the robot to kind of compare it and check the dimensions and geometry and see if things are looking good. Now, of course, this is not the first time that I'm drawing those legs. If you guys look into my wall in my shop, you will see that I have uh, lots of tiny drawings, uh, testing some geometries, kind of thinking about how I'm going to make it. So I have an overall idea already in my mind. And after I did the drawing and I cut it, I decided to separate each segment of the legs to try to create a, an axle point so that I can try and test uh, the movement of the leg. Now of course this robot's not going to, to be moving, this is a stationary model, but I think it has to make sense, I think it has to look like it could walk. And to create the axle points, uh, just for this uh, quick paper study, I've used some tiny screws, as you guys can see in the video. And now I can compare it to the robot, I can put it side by side and check the size, I can check the geometry and the weight distribution, and to be honest, could I have done it with Lego pieces? Yes, I could. But I just wanted to show you guys that even if you don't have Lego pieces and you have some paper around, try it. Uh, you, can, you can use some pieces of paper uh, to prototype a model. I think this is the idea, is to show you guys that uh, everything you have can actually be useful when creating your own models. Uh, don't, don't limit yourself. 
but yeah i think i'm satisfied with the geometry of this leg and i can't wait to start uh, actually building it now here's a shot of every piece that i had uh, discarded for this project i mean look at how many changes i've made to the design and how many pieces i had uh, done and moved on from them if you want to financially support this channel like all these amazing people did i have two links for you guys in the description box uh, i have a patreon and a coffee account subscribe to the channel if you haven't already that really helps and also hit like button if you like the video uh, but as always thanks for watching